Hello there. We're currently hiking in the Lost Valley section of the TNT area. Back again. There's a lot to discover out here. Today we're searching for a couple of cemeteries and what remains of a couple of old home sites. The cemeteries are the McRoberts and the Scott cemeteries. I found the Scott before, only in the spring. Um, it has snowdrops, which is a bulb type flower the first one to bloom in the spring, very early spring, and then both of them have daffodils. I've never been able to find the McRoberts Cemetery before, even in the spring. But uh, we're going to give it a shot today, here in the winter, when we have improved visibility. I think we'll find them. So both these cemeteries are in an area that was an African-American community for decades and there are 42 slaves buried between the two cemeteries, 30 in the McRoberts and 12 in the Scott. In the Scott, all the graves are unmarked and I believe it's the same thing in the McRoberts Cemetery. We'll find out when we get there. So you should have noticed earlier where I turned off the Lost Valley Trail and just started hiking through the woods. It's an old roadbed and it's fairly obvious if you just look at the grade of the ground. The road is on both sides of the trail. And uh, we made a left and we're going uphill. This entire hike is probably about uh, two and a half miles out, two and a half miles back uphill the entire way out, which means downhill the entire way back. So, about halfway between the Lost Valley Trail and the McRoberts Cemetery, I noticed obvious signs of another old roadbed coming off this one. Kind of curves back, makes a sharp downhill. Kind of curves around this valley for about half a mile and then it opens up into this really broad perpendicular valley that's really swampy and brushy and that's where I decided to turn around because that's not the hike I'm here to do today. Definitely looks like there could be some old buildings left behind, maybe some more bunkers. They seem to be located at the bottoms of valleys. Um, you know, curiosity always gets the best of me but today I'm just not going to follow it through all the way. Please do me a favor. If you're familiar with this area and you've been down there before and you know if there's something to go see, let me know in the comments below because I'd like to check it out. But if it's a waste of time, I'd also like to know that too because it was some work. Thank you. Okay, so the reason I feel fairly confident in finding the McRoberts Cemetery today is because I'm using Google Maps again, which gets me within roughly 100 yards visible site in the wintertime of the cemetery and it should have some historical markers from the Boone Duden Historical Society and fencing around it. They did all of those back in the 80s I believe, maybe later. <clears throat> so let's hope this works because it's a large area to explore when you don't have much of a clue and it's several hundred feet off this old road bed from what I've read. Now in the description below, I'll leave links to a couple of historical websites if you want more information about this area. So this is very interesting. If you notice off to my left, the yellow marker tape, flag tape there tied to the tree. The last few cemeteries I've been to have had yellow flag tape or orange flag tape. I think mostly yellow though. Tied to trees, kind of leading the way once you get close to the cemetery. And uh, if you're the person who did this and happens to be watching this video, 
please comment and below. I'd like to get in touch with you and there's so many more cemeteries out here I'd like to find and you've probably found them all. It'd be great. Maybe we could do a hike together sometime. That would be a lot of fun. But yeah, thank you for doing this regardless. It, uh, it helps a lot. So this is pretty cool. Between the old roadbed and the McRobert Cemetery <clears throat> are the remains of a home that was owned by John Navo in 1875. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to find that, but here's part of a poured concrete foundation. We've got some brick. And I see some uh, other foundation parts and kind of trash rubbish from the old home site around here too. Let's explore that. I'm also looking for a well that sounds like it may have a concrete cover and the name Walter Jesse etched across the top of that. We'll try and find all of that before we find the cemetery. Here we have one of the best remaining parts of a foundation I've ever found out here in the TNT area. This may be the well cover. It's not really what I was expecting and I don't see a name etched into it. So I'll continue looking. Well, this is a pretty large cemetery, the area. And it's pretty slopey too, which is surprising because it was relatively flat here on top of the ridge line. But um, we found it and there should be just some stones, not markers though. <clears throat> well, nothing, you know, carved on them, just like a stone you would pick up off the ground to mark some of the grave sites in here. And then, obviously, the yucca is behind me. And in the spring, this entire area, the whole hillside, apparently, is covered in daffodils. We may have to come back this spring. So we have several stone markers like these here in the cemetery. I'd read that they had sunk into the ground and around uh, 2010 been dug up and place back on top. Then, probably can't tell this on camera, but you have a depression where each person's buried. That's common in these older cemeteries. You know, the coffin and the body rot, the ground settles. Doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> Okay, so we're back on the old road bed, and we're off to find the Scott Cemetery. A little over a quarter mile. Do you see the old power pole in the middle of the frame? Okay, so the power pole was a giveaway to our next home site. Originally owned by F. Castillo in 1875, went through various owners up until 1941. We'll find the foundations from several buildings in this area, an old farm pond, and then several hundred feet behind us, deeper into the woods, the Scott Cemetery. This place is so beautiful in the spring. It's kind of drab this time of year. There are scattered bits of poured foundation throughout this area. Not much. Here we have the farm pond. We'll cross it to the left to get to the Scott Cemetery. Okay, I want to read a little bit about this cemetery. It's interesting. 
So within here, of course, are going to be just a bunch of stone markers, but they're supposed to be the remains of two Biscani mortuary metal grave markers. One's barely legible, but reads Lewis Scott. So the Muscany Mortuary was one of the many area businesses which ceased to exist when the U.S. government gained control of the land in 1941. I've been here before a couple times. I don't remember seeing those. We'll take a look around and see if we can find them though. Here we have a stone marker with a well-defined depression in the ground in front of it. No sign of the metal signs yet though. It's a small cemetery. Here we are in January, and the snowdrops are beginning to come up already. Okay, so there was no sign of the uh, metal markers. They probably disappeared a long time ago. We're heading back to the car now. I think we have enough time to look for one more home site that belonged to Eliza Teeters in 1940. It's on the uh, opposite side of the old roadbed from the McRoberts Cemetery, a few hundred yards off the road on the edge of a ridge. It's supposed to have a lot of good, um, ouch, a lot of good trash in it, rusted uh, bed frame, saw blades, tubs, that sort of thing. We never found it before, so we'll see if we have any luck. Also, beginning this evening, through till tomorrow evening. We're supposed to get four to seven inches of snow. Kind of hope the, uh, the weather report's right this time. They give me a good excuse to call off from work tomorrow and spend the day editing this video over coffee and hot chocolate. Sounds like a lot more fun than going to work. You're not gonna believe this. There's an armadillo in the woods just down the hill from me. Ah, uh, stay still, buddy. There he goes. Then it's my first time to see a live armadillo out in this area. This far north. I don't know how he's going to make it through the winter. Uh, I'm not going to chase him. Pretty cool. That was really cool. That was my first time seeing an armadillo out in the woods. I really want to throw the zoom lens on, but there wasn't time. He was booking down that hill. Hopefully it comes through in the video. Well, I've been looking for quite some time. <clears throat> this is really a big area for the ridge line. I did find this power pole right on the edge of the ridge. So I'm hoping that is my clue that the homestead is nearby, the Teeter home site. Nope, just a series of power poles running through the hills. Well, I'm back on the old road bed. Kind of touch and go for a bit there. I was kind of lost. I, I mean, I was confused for a little bit, but uh, it's all good now. Anyway, I had to give up the search. I'm out of time. I've got less than an hour till dark, roughly three miles back to the car. So we'll call this uh, the end of the adventure for today. Thanks for coming along.